In this video, we will walk you through some elements of competitive MechWarrior Online to help familiarize you with the game. Throughout, you will hear certain terms repeated. Some examples of those terms are light mech, a mech weighing between 20 and 35 tons, medium mech, weighing between 40 and 55 tons, heavy mech, weighing between 60 and 75 tons, and assault mech, weighing between 80 and 100 tons. We will also hear the terms Omnipod, a removable component used in Omnimech construction, allowing versatility and player options. And Ghost Heat, an additional heat penalty applied to a mech firing multiples at the same weapon. Teams play through the best of three games in an 8v8 format on the Conquest game mode. Each team is comprised of four different mech classes being restricted to two of each class. That's two light, two medium, two heavy, and two assault. Conquest within MechWare Online is set up with five different capture points on a map. For each point a team is captured, it counts for one game point per second for that team, with each team earning up to 750 game points to determine the winner. Capturing a point is as simple as standing within a designated area for a short period of time. A team can choose to fill the capture bar for the point, or simply quick cap the point to begin the scoring for their team. A winner can also be determined by a team destroying the opposing team's 8 mechs and have a mathematical inevitability to reach 750 points by the end of the 15 minute match timer. Conquest has been used as a preferred competitive game mode for years due to the complex in-game strategies it creates. Keeping your team grouped in a single location enables the enemy team to capture the points located throughout the map and win on points, but an early focus on capturing points enables the enemy team to group up and destroy mechs with enough time to recapture the points when they are the last one standing. Throughout competitive MechWare Online, we, see, we tend to see certain mechs utilized more than others. This is based upon the fact that as PGI releases new mechs, weapons, and game balance updates, the optimal mechs and loadouts change. This is referred to as the meta, literally the best tool for the job. And so far in the 2017 tournament, we've seen some fairly interesting shifts in the meta. While there will always be optimal mechs and suboptimal mechs, the intended strategies and playstyles can help dictate which mechs brought into the field for a given match. In the light category, the Arctic Cheetah had long dominated the light class, but had seen a slight dip until the recent changes to the machine gun weapon systems. It is still dominating usage in this tournament, but we are seeing some significant usage out of the Wolfhound. The Wolfhound has great survivability, and its ability to boat lasers adds to its combined value. The standard medium laser loadout of the Wolfhound gives it a slight edge under the combat over the Cheetah, but the machine guns carried by the Cheetah have been proven deadly in late game combat. It's no surprise to anyone that the Hunchback 2C is still king of the medium class. Its omnipod configurations, jump jets, maneuverability, and high mounts allow it to fit many roles on the battlefield. Other mechs of this class seeing use tend to fit closer range builds, and at the World Championship level of play, medium brawlers aren't typically a winning combination. The Nightjire sat atop of the pile for heavy mechs for a long time, but the Summoner has jumped its way to the top. The addition of Ghost Heat penalties for combined PPC and Goss weapons really hit the knight in its gyre. The summoner is a very tanky mech with good jump jets and omnipod versatility. Supernovas have taken the assault class by storm. The Kodiak was barely able to claw its way ahead of the rest of the pack, but it has seen far less usage in the supernova. The hard points and cooling efficiency of the supernova leave it as the undoubted choice in the assault class. Within MechWarrior Online, mechs tend to be built in a few different configurations. Those configurations are Brawler, Laser Vomit, PPC Goss, and Laser Ranged. Brawlers tend to engage the enemy forces at 300 meters or less. The typical choice for these mechs is either SRMs or medium pulse lasers. However, small pulse, small heavy, and medium lasers still see play in this category. For Laser Vomit, the standard Nomenclature is as many large pulse lasers as you can fit and fill the rest with ER medium lasers. Newer laser weapons are seeing some play, but the intent with this build is to synergize your weapon recharge, range, and hardpoint location. The advent of the skill tree and the ability to stack heat generation quirks has helped cement laser vomit as one of the most advantageous loadouts in MechWarrior Online. PPC and Gauze With the repeated increases to cooldown and the linking of Gauze and PPCs for purposes of ghost heat, has completely removed the advent of Gauss PPC builds in competitive play. Gauss rifles see limited use and typically in conjunction with ER medium lasers or large pulse lasers due to the similar range brackets. PPC boating has become the replacement offering pinpoint front loaded damage at long ranges. The return of the summer has enabled PPC pop turning to return to the competitive play as the mech can jump just high enough to fire off its PPCs before dropping back into cover. And lastly, laser ranged. 
While these loadouts can be considered laser varmint, they specifically stack a tremendous amount of ER large lasers to provide substantial damage at long range. This loadout generates a large amount of heat, and the long burn time of these lasers force a relatively high exposure time to enemy fire. The advantage, however, is the instantaneous travel time of the lasers when compared to the similarly long range, high heat option of PPCs.